for a minute. Um, we are in Oxford and you might be able to tell from the accent I'm not from Oxford. Um, and you might think what I did that um, moving to Oxford, you're going to get um, uh, a different type of school to what I was used to teaching in Manchester or in Rotherham. Um, and I was massively surprised when I arrived here. Um, New Marston is um, a city school um, very close to the centre of Oxford. And we serve a very, very diverse population in, in every sense of the word. So it's about 29 languages spoken at our school. So Rachel, you, you have got the brilliant, thank you. Co-hosting now. Um, about 29 languages spoken in our school, and, and there's a real range within that of children. Um, there's probably about eight children at the minute in our school who have very little English, but actually a lot of the children here have some level of English just not um, a fluent level of English. Um, you know, we, ha we have children of doctors that work at the local hospital that speak some English, and we have refugees as well. Um, so a real, real range of children um, who are, we're about 75% of our children are ethnic minority children. Um, we have high SEN numbers, high pupil premium numbers. Um, and actually, we have some children who are EL in the sense that they speak British Sign Language as their second language because we also host um, a resource base for deaf pupils. So that adds another dimension to the, the AL aspect of our school. Um, we, I, I feel very lucky we've kind of embedded um, a very relationships based approach to um, our school. Bear with me, let me just, it's hiding underneath the. Um, the ID bit here, so bear with me a second. There we go. Um, there we go. Um, we've embedded a kind of nurture-based approach to our to our school. We're a very relationships-based approach. So my job today is not to talk about everything absolutely that I agree with with Cassie, and I don't want you to think that that we don't focus on that because we do. Um, my job today is to talk to you about how we plan for our EAL pupils. Um, I absolutely agree that relationships have to be right and that children have to feel safe and secure. Um, for us, we invested over the last few years a lot in teacher professional learning and development so that those children that had some level of English were very well catered for within the lessons, as well as some of our disadvantaged pupils where there was a word gap and some of our SEM pupils. So that's, that's my job to talk to you about today for um, five or six minutes. So um, I guess one of the biggest things that we have spent a lot of time on is vocabulary and planning for the vocabulary that children need to be discreetly taught to them. Um, so we did some CPLD with our staff using um, the word gap report um, written by Oxford University. And we really looked at how, how we could implement teaching of vocabulary and how we could plan for that. So what you can see on the screen now, and I've, I've, rather than use kind of explanations, I've kind of shared the live documents with you. Um, what you can see on the screen here is um, a medium term plan for geography, a unit of geography. And you can see in the top left box here, or the second box in, the key vocabulary. What our teachers do for every unit of work is they look at the tier one, two and three vocabulary. Um, so we, the tier one vocabulary is pupils who are very new to English. They will need support to learn that, those vocabulary, those words, but most children will know them in year three. Um, the tier two vocabulary is usually um, technical language from previous years um, because we build on that year on year but it may be the vocabulary that some of our children who have some English will need support with. And then our tier three language is your kind of exceptional language that's needed um, to really excel at that subject. So I guess the, the reason I'm showing this is if, if this is not planned and thought about before lessons start or before the unit starts, um, then, it, then it might not be included. Once we've planned our units, we then share knowledge organisers and we have two different types of knowledge organisers. So um, the unit that I was just showing you is a geography unit about weather and um, around the world, um, particularly Europe, this, this, this year, um, year group we're looking at. Um, and so for some of those children that need the tier one vocabulary um, 
explicitly taught, we would give a picture word match regardless of the age. And that's something I'll come back to in a little bit, the regardless of age. Um, this would go home to parents and it would go home before the term starts so that in advance, parents are able to talk to children about these words. Sometimes they are translated if that needs to happen, um, but not always. And the, the same word mat or knowledge organizer is available in the classroom for the unit. For those children who are a little bit further on with their English, um, and particularly where parents have got good levels of English, this is a year four knowledge organizer. Um, I really benefit from this as a parent. My child was learning all about the different names for rocks at Stonehenge, and I wouldn't have known that as an English speaking parent. But for some of our um, academics or doctors, just to know what words we're going to be using and what, what the children are really going to need. You know, if a child understands what flint is, they're going to really be able to access the experience that we offer our children when we're making fires as part of our Stone Age topic. So the top right box is something that goes home um, for those children. In fact, for all children other than those with new English um, or a lower level, a, a less language. Once that vocabulary has been planned, um, here, this is one lesson off a medium term plan, and I don't expect you to read it all now, um, but what's really important for us and what is now embedded is the vocabulary is not just at the top of the planning, it's, it is taught. So um, you will see that the first thing that after a review of previous learning is that we're gonna talk about climates and it's planned to have a discussion about what that word means and explain it to the rest of the class. And if we need to put up some visuals, we will do that. Um, and again, it's planned that um, part of watching the video that we will address what the term weather means versus climate. So really, really unpicking the vocabulary and making sure that children understand it has been really key for us. And what then happens when we're implementing the practice is all of our vocabulary is placed up on a board and this runs right from reception up to year six. Um, the words are put on a grammar splat board and they are then referred to throughout. Now they're, they're ideally triple coded. Um, so this isn't a perfect display by any means, but by triple coded, I mean that they're, they're written, they're color coded by word class. And then for somewhere the children might be finding it quite tricky to understand, um, there's also a picture. So you can see on the word declared there, there's somebody stood on a, on a box explaining what um, they're declaring something and the children will come up with that image together. Um, and those will be up for the term. So this is year five at the minute and they're reading Beowulf. Um, so some of these words like rage have been discussed. Um, they're planned, they're discussed, and they're then used as kind of, um, if we've got five minutes at the end of the lesson, we might hand them all out and they'll give a clue and the other children will guess what word they're holding. Um, and they're also kept, you can see in the plastic wallet so that we keep going back over the vocabulary that the children may not have known. So vocabulary is something that's really important to us. And the main thing I was gonna share with you today, but I have got a couple of other things in terms of, of what we plan. Um, so we use sentence stems across the school. If the children are in a maths lesson down in year two, um, there will be the same sentence stems in the middle of the table um, regularly for the children. So um, I know that is one of our sentence stems. I know that because is one that other children might use. Um, our partner, partners are very well planned. Um, we take time at the start of the term to plan who children are gonna be sat next to. Um, word maps I've talked about. The other thing that we do in our planning is we might um, speak to a child at the start of the lesson and tell them what question they're going to be asked and give them the coloured word card so that they have a clue as to what the answer might be about and that the child then isn't surprised um, but can rehearse the answer to a question so that is planned as well. Um, two more things to share with you. Um, one is here, um, sentence then. So this is planned quite often in English for our children. Um, you don't need my Grammarly pop up there. Um, so we, um, this is when a group of children in year six were doing some descriptive writing. And um, this will be, the children have to be trained in using these, um, but along with the grammar splat words or the word mat, 
this is something that the children will have to be able to write a paragraph. So they will take one sentence um, and work along the chart and then they'll move down to the next one, which was about appearance and then one about behavior. And what we found is if children use these for six or seven lessons and then we take the frame away, some of the work that we've done has become embedded for those children. For those that need something a little less, that would be quite overwhelming for a year three. Um, so um, the year group that are looking at countries and capitals, again, just a simple writing frame is used like this um, for children. Um, again, it goes back to climate. Um, so this is, this is what we would use in that instance. Um, planning in general, um, Cassie mentioned it, visuals are really key for us. You can see here words again being used in English, um, grammar black colours, um, triple coded. This is current. I've just taken this today. They're reading Frankenstein in year three. Um, so we have very ambitious texts for our children. Um, but with, the, with that visual the timeline, um, this really has helped our children to be able to retell the story. Um, so this is really strong modelling for us um, that the children can, can use and, and, and it's great scaffolding tools for them. Um, the only other thing that I was going to say is as well as visuals, you know, we really don't underestimate the value of manipulatives for children, particularly in maths or in topic lessons. I think that um, regardless of age, this is what I was coming back, coming on to um, earlier. Year sixes are used to getting out every bit of maths equipment that they need and using it. So it's not, oh dear, you need the word cards. Oh dear, you need the um, the um, deans. It, it doesn't matter. It, it really is embedded throughout our school. Um, and finally, um, we do plan for very specific pupils. We have these as kind of whole class initiatives, but we do pop the name of specific specific pupils on our planning so that if there is a brand new child, we are tailoring and personalizing those lessons to our children. Um, it, you get quicker at this. Again, we've put a lot of CPLD in for staff to support this. Um, but if, if staff know what tools are available to them, then we have found that they um, are um, finding it much easier to do and it, it's not taking the time that it, it may have done before. Um, so that is it from me. I'm going to stop sharing. Um, I must say we were asked to, to talk a little bit about um, why we did the EAL award and for us we really wanted that professional audit. We wanted or I wanted as a school, as a new head to the school. Um, I'd been the deputy here and I'd been the inclusion coordinator but I just wanted that feel for, for what we needed to be doing next for our families. Um, and for us, it really threw up something quite important as a head teacher. Um, we had a lot of ethnic minority pupils, but Graham picked up that there was quite a disparity between the ethnic minority pupil numbers and the EAL numbers. And he was saying, surely more of these ethnic minority pupils must be EAL. And that has massive implications in terms of census data and funding in schools. Um, so... You know, that was really a really, and sometimes you just need that fresh pair of eyes to see things. So that was really helpful. Um, and, and now as a result of the quality mark and the audit, we're monitoring the take up actually this year of the personal development opportunities we have in school enrichment and things just to make sure that all groups are represented in that. Um, so two really valuable things with more as well.